Good morning, church. I'm just out here uh, with my kiddos enjoying a lovely fall evening at Jenkins Park. That's right. It is officially fall <laughs> as of Tuesday. Uh, me and my kids on Wednesday had the privilege of getting to walk out at Herman Park in Houston near the medical center and the zoo. And it was gorgeous weather just like today, almost like uh, walking outside and air conditioning. Uh, it was a little bit damp from all the rain, but uh, we got to see so many things while we were there. We got to see a variety of ducks, uh, crested ducks, whistling ducks, uh, green heads, uh, Chinese geese. Uh, we even got to see a bunch of ducklings following their mom. We got to see turtles, big ones and little bitty ones about the size of a half dollar, or maybe even a little bit smaller than that. We got to see squirrels that would come right up to your hand, uh, blue jays, butterflies, lizards, salamanders, and all sorts of other little critters. Oh, we even saw some rabbits. Uh, but the most interesting thing, the thing that stuck in my mind the most about our walk through Herman Park was we saw some pigeons. And I know that might surprise you, of all the things we saw, that the pigeons would be the most interesting, but what was really interesting about it is there was about 150 or 200 of these guys and they were just uh, sitting on this platform near the water and we were over there looking at some ducks and uh, somebody scared these pigeons and they all took off and flew at the exact same time and they flew right through where we were so they were flying right by my face uh, I, I ducked because I thought they were going to fly right into me uh, they probably wouldn't have but you know, it's just that feeling when you see 150, 200 birds flying right at you, you might want to duck. But what was so cool about that experience is, is you could just feel how powerful it was. One pigeon by itself, you know, flying by is not that big of a deal. It might make a little bit of noise or move a little bit of wind. But when all of these pigeons came flying by me at the same time, uh, you could feel the wind. I mean, really feel it. And you could really hear it. It was very loud. Um, startling almost and uh, I just thought it was really powerful I started thinking about that in light of the way that we've worshipped the last few months and how we've worshipped at home individually or uh, with our families and sometimes it, we feel like individuals and, and maybe it's not we feel like it's not as powerful or is as moving or having as much of an impact but I don't think God sees it that way. I think when God sees us in our homes as individuals physically separated, that he sees us singing together, that we are together in spirit, and we are together in mind, and we are together in heart. And I want us to think about our worship that way this morning. Uh, let's worship and, and move the wind, just like that uh, group of pigeons that flew right by my face. Let, let our song ring out and be joyful and as we do that as we go into worship now i want you to remember these words from psalm 95 come let us sing for joy to the lord let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song join now sing with us love the lord The Lord is a jealous God, filled with vengeance and rage. He takes revenge on all who oppose him and continues to rage against his enemies. The Lord is slow to get angry, but his power is great. He never lets the guilty go unpunished. He displays his power in the whirlwind and the storm, the billowing clouds or the dust beneath his feet. His command, the oceans dry up and the rivers disappear. Lust pastures of Bashan and Carmel fade, and the green forests of Lebanon wither. In his presence, the mountains quake and the hills melt away. The earth trembles and his peoples are destroyed. Who can stand before his fierce anger? Who can survive his burning fury? His rage blazes forth like fire. 
and the mountains crumble to dust in his presence. The Lord is good, a strong refuge when trouble comes. He is close to those who trust in him. But he will sweep away his enemies in an overwhelming flood. He will pursue his foes into the darkness of night. Before we pray, some words from Solomon. I've seen the burden God has laid on the human race. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has set eternity in the human heart. No one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to end. I do know there's nothing better for people than to be happy and to do good while they live, that each might eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This truly is God's gift. I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing taken from it. And I know God does this so people will honor Him. Let's pray. Father, we honor you. We fall on our face before you. And we seek to only grow in respect and reverence of you. You are the Holy One. You alone are worthy. You are worth our all. Help us to see this so each day. Help us to sow the seeds of this in all our ways. We shudder to even speak to you, Father. Who are we to speak to you? But you know our hearts, Father, and you know we speak all the time. We see the burdens that people carry, and we say, Lord, lift those burdens. We see the illnesses and the diseases that crush people, Father. And we say, Lord, heal. We know the things that pierce people's hearts, Father. Things from long ago or very recent. And we say, Lord, give comfort and release. We know those, Father, who seem so alone, who feel as if no one cares. And we say, Lord, breathe your spirit of companionship through every crack and crevice of their heart. That you know our hearts, Father, and they say these things and so much more. We are too busy talking. Help us, Father, to see you at work. Give us eyes to this end to see your beauty that surrounds us everywhere if we would only have the eyes to see it. Help us to say no to the deceiver when he calls us to focus on the things that are dark. Instead, Father, help us to work your victory over the deceiver and darkness by turning the tables on him, by looking to the light and walking in your ways. Father, help us to never stop talking to you. Help us to never cease and conversing with you and walking with you in that talk each day. May our life become unending conversation with you. May our hearts grow in wonder. And when words fail us, as they do all the time, help us, Father, to take comfort in the fact that you know our hearts before we ever speak. 
We love, we love you for encouraging us to talk with you. We love you that you would speak to us, that you would favor us so. Give us ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, church family. You know, I've uh, grown up in the church. I can't remember a time in my life when I wasn't um, attending church regularly, specifically uh, here at Missouri Street. I'm very blessed because of that. And during my life, there's a phrase that's uh, often used around this time of our worship, a phrase that I heard so much growing up, I thought surely it was part of Scripture. Uh, It's not. That phrase is separate and apart. And I think that phrase is used to draw a line of sorts between communion, the sharing of the bread and the fruit of the vine, and our contribution. Um, In this day, separate and apart can take on a very different meaning, right? As we continue to gather remotely, virtually, um, for everyone's safety, for at least a little while longer, we are physically separated. We are apart from each other. What I would challenge all of us to do and encourage us all to do now is not focus on our physical separation, but on our shared participation in remembering Christ's death and his resurrection. 1 Peter 1.3 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. As we partake of the symbols that remind us of Christ's body and his blood. Let's remember the great mercy, the the fantastic gift we have through them. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your indescribable, undeserved mercy. Help us to focus now on Christ's death and his resurrection and the salvation that we have through that the salvation that we share in together, God. We don't fully understand the how or the why, but we are so thankful. We are so humbled. Help us to remember that not just now, not just today, but every day. It's through the awesome name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Never repay evil back with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scriptures say, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. Hi guys, I'm just eating some fruits and and aren't grapes yummy? Speaking of grapes, the fruit of the spirit's not a grape. The fruit of the spirit's not a grape.
If you want to be a great, you might as well hear it. You can't be a part of the spirits, the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And also... <laughs> The fruit of the spirit's not an apple. The fruit of the spirit's not an apple. If you want to be an apple, you might as well hear it. You can't be afraid of the spirits. The fruits are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Mm. Hey guys, welcome to another re rendition of Children Bible, uh, Bible Minute. Today we are talking about fear and how Jesus can take away it. Now, this vase represents you and all of us. Now, this baking soda represents fear. And, and the vinegar represents Jesus. Yes, that's right. And so, you have fear. We all have it. And Jesus, we, Jesus can take away fear. Now, Jesus can take away fear like it bubbles up in it. Jesus can make fear bubble up and disappear. Now, all we need is Jesus when we have fear. It's okay to be afraid, but Jesus can help you. See? This is a kind of a little messy project. <laughs> Bye! Today we will be reading Joshua 1.9. Here is what I am commanding you to do. Be strong and brave. Do not be afraid. Do not lose hope. I am the Lord your God. I will be with you everywhere you go. Hey guys, can you sing a song with me? We're going to sing the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, that's the love to the Romans. First and second Corinthians, Galatians and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. First and second Thessalonians, first and second Timothy, Titus and Philemon. Hebrews, James, 1st and 2nd Peter, 1st and 2nd and 3rd John, Jude and Revelation. Thanks for singing. Hey guys, let's play. Avalon, may you play for us? Sure, Elliot. I'll pray. Dear God, thank you for this day, and thank you for everything that you have given us. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins, and please help us to be good and believe in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey guys, bye. Thanks for watching. See you next time.
What if I told you that one of the most encouraging words in all the Bible is nested right in the center of the book of Romans? It's virtually the, the pivot point on which the whole book turns. It's a question. It's a rhetorical question. And you know it. It goes like this. The Spirit of God speaking through Paul, his instrument, to Christians. If God is for us, who can be against us? Wow. And we know what he means. He's saying, God's got your back. Nobody takes out God. God's got this. and He's got you. It's going to be all right. No matter how much darkness seems to be descending on you. God is for you. As a Christian, I remind myself of that often. But I also need to learn, lean in and consider the opposite side of the coin. You know, God did show up and He looked some people right in the eye. And He said, and He said it repeatedly, I am against you. Wow. And I'm no better than the next guy. And they were no worse than me. We're all made in His image. What would make God show up and say such a thing to anyone? Well, that's what the book of Nahum is about. You've read Nahum, right? <laughs> Maybe not recently. I've not found very many people who have. It seems it's one of the most neglected books in the Bible, and yet it's one of the shortest and maybe it's most neglected because it is brutal. It starts with something of a conundrum. We begin with a word, a vision to God's prophet, Nahum. And the word Nahum means comfort. And we smile. And then we immediately learn that Nahum is from Elkosh. And Elkosh means God is harsh. Wow. Well, which is it? Both. God is kind. He is good. And He is harsh. And He is severe. He's not harsh or severe because He gets up cranky some days. Or because He gets kicks from showing up and saying, I'm against you. Let me show you what that's like. Now, if God is ever against someone, it's because they have begin, begun to be against Him and have continued along that path. That's exactly what the people of Nineveh had done. The capital of the world's superpower of the time, Assyria. And God winds up His prophet Nahum to give comfort to the oppressed, those that the Assyrians have been kicking, and also words of warning to the Assyrians. It's time to repent. Time's almost up. Have I got your attention? You know, when you read the third, the last chapter of Nahum, it reads almost like, in, like looking at the pictures of a combat photographer, a photojournalist whose camera never goes off and shows us the horrific matters of war. Absolutely nothing is unfiltered. Nothing is censored. We see it all, whether we want to or not. In fact, some of the word pictures that Nahum offers us are so shocking and revolting that we can't believe God said that of himself or that he would do that to people. I can't even mention it in this sermon because there's children watching but it's in our Bible. And it's a very adult message that even children need to grow up and hear. And children even need to hear it this way. God is for you. And He's against everything that is against Him. And because He's for you, He's against everything that is truly against you. He's got your back. He wants your heart. And so walk with God. And take comfort that no matter how dark things get, God can see you through. And that if you don't want Him, and if you want only yourself, well, God will show you up. And God will show up. 
and let you have your own way. He'll let you have what you've earned. He'll let you reap what you've sown. He'll let you harvest what you've planted. And you don't want that. You want and you need His mercy. And He is full of mercy because He tells us He is slow to anger. And He proves it by giving us another day to live and breathe and move and have our being in Him. And as long as we live and move and breathe and have our being in Him, our every breath is to breathe His praise. Our every action is to honor His ways. And then He won't show up and look us in the eye and say, I am against you. He'll show up and say, Oh, how I'm for you. Oh, how you've been for me. Let's continue to walk together. I can see we are agreed. If there's any comfort or peace or hope, it's from God. And if there is any harshness or severity against evil or darkness or wickedness, wickedness or anything that is vile, well, we will rejoice in that because darkness and the devil will not have the last word. The book of Nahum ends in perhaps the most amazing of ways. Loud applause. Those who see Nineveh fall clap in agreement and joy over her downfall. She loved darkness and embraced it to her death. And so darkness and death, all that is devilish, dies with her. And the people who were oppressed under her iron foot can breathe again and find peace in their God and have comfort from His Spirit. And life is good. And so they offer up applause to the God who always conquers all that is not of Him. And so how should we live our days as the darkness descends on us, as children of light? And what would that light look like? I'll leave you with some words from Romans 2 and also Romans 12. They're almost like commentary on Nahum at least the ones from Romans 2. And they sound like straight from Jesus, those from Romans 12. Do you not know the kindness and the patience and the tolerance of God is to bring you to repentance? And then the words in chapter 12. Don't take revenge Do not repay evil for evil. Leave vengeance to the Lord, for He will repay. Live in such a way that you live at peace with everyone. This is a tall enough task for us to center our life on. It'll take all of us, all of our life, to do just that, to do this good that is from our good God. And if we do that, oh, how the Lord will lean in and look us right in the eye and says, I know you. I'm for you. Grace and peace be with us all.